Hey everyone, episode 61 is finally out and I'm ready to make a full analysis. I will show you all the secrets and references of this episode. Let's talk about Speaker Woman and her new powers. Who is that toilet with the long hair? What cameraman are we watching this episode on behalf of? Get your tea and snacks ready. This video is going to be very interesting. Let's go. From the first frames, we see the cameraman with his arm cut off. He runs with his mate straight away from the Skibidi toilet. By the way, he eventually escapes, and I think his arm will definitely be repaired. He might even get a cool weapon instead of an arm. But his buddy doesn't manage to escape and gets cut in half. Remember that in episode 57, Plungerman was badly injured and Simp Cameraman was sawed in half too. And we've already seen in the example of this scientist that such a breakage can be repaired. He was made into a cyborg, and apparently we are expecting a new army of cyborg cameramen because there are too many sawed agents. Let's deal with this Skibidi invention. First of all, we've already seen more efficient technology in episode 48. Yes, the jetpack uses more fuel than a car, but it can fly over obstacles. This same Skibidi mobile lost control and crashed into a truck. By the way, I'm surprised Skibidi hasn't come up with a defense against the hypnotic cannon. Yeah, we've seen Skibidi's skull, which the cannon doesn't affect because he's a robot. But I think it's very hard to make such an invention, and it has to be controlled remotely. So this Skibidi death machine is just a regular soldier who's had some new technology tried on him. We're in the United States of America. There are palms growing here, maybe it's Florida or California. As we can see, there are only small gray toilets on the battlefield. Skibidi giants are not here. It seems to me that in past episodes, the Titans destroyed all the dangerous Skibidi in the US and so moved on to Europe. So here the regular cameramen are cleaning up the remaining toilets. Dafuk can be seen behind the rubble of a destroyed building. This time it's definitely him and not male 07 or 09. We can see the glasses and his hairstyle. Now these two cameramen remind me of those guys from episode 43. The one in the light colored suit didn't know what to do then and this one ran away. By the way, I've said it before, but he reminds me of the cameraman who interrogated Skibidi in episode 21. And here we see a clear reference to the most critical streamer. Dafuk give him a shout out in the video description. As far as I can remember, this is the first time we've seen Skibidi with the head of a real famous person. It would be cool to see references like this in future episodes. But let's forget for a second that this is a streamer and discuss him as a Skibidi toilet. He has a jetpack only much more powerful than the regular Skibidi from episode 54. I don't understand what he needs this equipment for. Maybe to control flight, lights, and rocket launchers, I don't know. By the way, my favorite useless rocket launchers are back in business. As I've said many times, they're useless weapons. Because once they're fired, they have to be reloaded. Our Skibidi Jesus took out these three agents with gunfire. But as we can see, the rockets are still in place. Yeah, he's spinning his rocket launchers like he's reloading, but the rockets are still there. I'm guessing that thing on his chest is also firing shots, only smaller. That's what Skibidi used to blast the agents. We also don't see any rockets flying, but in this moment where he shoots at Speaker Woman, there's a rocket there. I think we'll talk about it later. What about the spotlights on Skibidi Jesus? This is TV Man technology again. That's how the big TV man blinded the Skibidi toilets and cameramen. To protect the cameras, the TV men gave them protection. But this time, no one was wearing any. So we can see how the Skibidi toilets felt when the big TV man blinded them. Notice that the POV cameraman has a red shirt, and we only know of two characters with that shirt. I assumed they were brothers. There are one with a black camera and one with a white camera, and I'm pretty sure it's this guy right here. I mean, we see these cameramen in front of him. Too bad they got blown up by Skibidi Jesus, but I'm sure they'll be rebuilt. At the end of the episode, the helicopter with the engineers was on the way. Incidentally, I'm not sure if Skibidi can be rebuilt after being flushed or blown up, but we've never seen anything like that. I think the Skibidi will start to run out soon. In recent episodes, we often see a helicopter with engineers recovering agents. That said, the Skibidi seem to be created from humans, which means they may run out at some point. Though there are still have about 7 billion soldiers in reserve, if there are so many living on this planet, of course. Let's move on to the most interesting character, Speaker Woman. And damn, this is the best woman on the show, in my opinion. I mean, we've seen camera woman and TV woman, but they're just too cold-blooded. They're like, I'm a soldier, a skibidi killing machine. I don't need to show emotions. And this lady is walking around with headphones on and getting high on music. She's listening to her own music to cheer herself up. Damn, that's genius. 
She's Speaker Woman. Note that her speaker looks newer. We saw Speaker Men with a black speaker in episode 24, but it was exactly the same as the others. Also, there are special holes for throwing objects. Knives, for example. She's got high heels on her feet, like she doesn't care about the battle. It's all about looking stylish and having fun. By the way, it looks like her speaker is glowing, like an improved Titan Speaker Man. Notice that she has a pink shirt and pink laces on her heels? All right, she's got her own style. When Skibidi turns on the spotlights, she raises her hands like a thief when a cop shines a flashlight on him. That begs the question. First of all, if she's not blinded by the lights, then she doesn't have eyes or a camera. Then how does she navigate through space? I suppose she sends out microwaves and they hit objects and they come back, which is how deep sea fish orient themselves. But then, how did she realize the spotlights were shining on her? That will remain a mystery of Speaker Woman. Did you notice the backpack on her back? That's not a jetpack. I think it's an amplifier. She bounces the rocket with the power of sound so it flies back to Skibidi. Also notice how a Speaker Woman did a somersault and pushed herself off the ground with a sound wave. Looks like a new technology that the other Speakermen don't have. It seems we see again that the woman is more trained than the rest of the soldiers. I like how Dafuk has added female characters to the series. When before there was just a useless camera woman who was destroyed in the same episode. But now every woman is an experienced trained fighter. So yeah, I'm looking forward to a new army of simps in the comments. Look at this moment where she inserts knives into special holes and fires them using a sound wave. It's insane, but it works. Now listen to that sound. Yeah, it's a reference to that legendary scream. Skibidi Jesus has a huge piece of equipment instead of a cistern, but there's a flush button on top of it, but it's protected. Is it just me, or does that protection not work at all? Has it ever stopped anyone from flushing Skibidi? Look at how epically Speaker Woman lands next to the POV cameraman. Yeah, I think Dafuk got that cameraman with the red shirt for a reason. First of all, it's a matching color to Speaker Woman's. Secondly, it seems now we will see another love line between this agent and this skilled girl. This moment where she gives her hand is a reference to episode 24. Just as before, we see the Speaker Man cargo plane. On the right, the Speaker Men have already landed and are doing their victory dance. By the way, this is the first time we've ever seen a big Speaker Man dancing. I think this woman is very inspiring to her mates. Notice how the traffic lights are green all around. This once again tells us that all is well. For a very long time now, Dafuk has made it seem like the Alliance is winning hard. But something tells me it won't be long before the Skibidi hit back strongly. Look at this scene. I'm just sure the POV cameraman has fallen in love with Speaker Woman. She's a great fighter while being very emotional and funny. I hope he won't be a simp. We already have one guy for that job. And what I am sure of is that the audience in the comments will be simping. So I await your comments about how adorable Speaker Woman is. Don't forget to put a like and subscribe to the channel. And that was me, Isa Toilet. See ya!